So I'm trying to put together a 372 XPG heated handle saw that doesn't have heated handles. I'm going to add the heated handles to it. Um, it's a little bit tricky and I don't have a diagram so I'm going off what I pictures that I find on the internet. There are supposed to be two screws here and a heating element. And what you're supposed to do is put this in there and put the screws in. Well, you have to drill holes for the screws and you have to make sure that you have screws that'll fit. So I've got some screws here. I've got a bunch of tiny ones that are an assortment that I'm going to make sure fit here. So the, the heating element goes in and then you have to fish these wires through basically underneath where the switch goes. Now both the, the wires are through. screws may be a little bit short. We'll see. Once it goes through. Cool. So now I've just screwed down the heating element. Just a couple of screws that I found in my junk bin, but getting the original ones would be a better idea, at least for that job. That's kind of tricky. So we've got the wires through there, and now the on-off switch. Now I just took a Dremel tool and Dremeled out this area. Uh, one of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to overcut, especially on the width of this switch, because there are tabs here. So you want to measure from this part of the switch here, not this part. Again, as an illustration, this part of the switch here, not, not this part, because these tabs are flexible, and the whole idea of flexible tabs is that it'll click in. So you can measure it this way, and then this way, but don't measure up here. Okay. So you just take and dremel that out, take a file to it as needed. Now this happens to be a two position switch. Some of them do come as three position switches. right in there. Now one of these comes back around. I would assume it's the one with the spade connector. So that comes back around there to click in there. And this one I think clicks into the handle, but I'm not sure yet. We will get there. So throttle cable goes in. Trigger assembly goes up and in. And there's a little tab in here that has to come over the plastic piece there. You'll see. So here's the spring down and in and it rests I think on the side of the trigger itself. So now you've got this piece sticking up. mates in with the safety trigger piece here. Let's see if we can get this just to go. Exactly. Yep. That just fits right up in there. Just like that. Now, this is not necessarily as easy as I've just made it out to be. Pin goes in the side, from the front, and then another pin. Another pin goes in here. 
and these just get tapped in. is a hole that it does have to meet up with, but once it meets up with that, the tapping is no problem. Take an Allen and just use that as the punch. Tap both of the pins in. trigger assembly again. Best I can figure out, the generator goes on like this and the wire, rather than like this, goes like this and the wire travels up this direction and it goes actually goes up and over. Um, I didn't design it that way, but that's sure how it looks. So let's put three screws down here with some blue Loctite. Two, three. Ah, so here's what happens on, I guess on the regular cover too. So I've got this little channel. It's this tiny little angled channel right here. I'm willing to bet that that's where the wire goes. Yeah, okay. But what this plate does have, that this one doesn't, is this space here. I wonder if that's for the thermostat. I'll bet that's for the thermostat. I don't even know if I'm actually going to use the, uh, the heated carb on this, but we'll see. Someone once told me to put the handle on before the cylinder and, and before the plate here, so let's do that. Let's put the handle on. One thing that drives me completely berserk about 372 XP handles. I always have such a hard time getting them on. Eventually they just go, but you kind of got to... I don't know. <laughs> They're a pain. At least now everything's kind of open here. That's really cool. So now I can demonstrate that this goes right over to the switch. ground wire here goes over as well. And while I'm at it, I might as well put the, the long green wire in here too. So the long greenish blue wire comes in here too. That goes to the regular switch. And this wire goes to the handle. 
I don't even really know if I'm going to use the carburetor heater or not. I may just include that with the saw rather than having to wire it in. Um, one thing about the carburetor heater that I think uh, a friend of mine brought up to me was you really need it to start the saw. You don't necessarily need it while the saw is going. So since the carburetor heater doesn't actually warm up the saw, what's the point? Um, this is never going to get used in that kind of climate anyway. But, anyway, <laughs> just kind of silly. Complete silliness. Don't know exactly where this wire is supposed to come out, but I think there is probably pretty close. So now we should be able to put this piece down. little blue Loctite. Sure, the red wire is in the channel properly. Should move back and forth easily. One, two, three, four. Good. A little blue Loctite. Put the AV bolt down. And let's do the other AV bolt just to have that done. For the most part, the rest of the saw assembly should be fairly straightforward. The handle that clicks into there, the red clicks into the red, and the black line here goes onto the AV mount that is specific for uh, the, the, the G models. So this actually, this AV mount goes on the cylinder, of course, um, whatever cylinder you're using. So let's put that on the cylinder. Now, might as well. A little bit of Loctite. Now, it seems to me that if you didn't happen to have this particular mount, that really all you need is a ground. So. probably you could probably extend that instead of to here you can extend you can extend this black wire um, to somewhere else to to ground it as long as you get a ground you're good because you have the energy traveling from the generator to the switch from the switch uh, out to this handle, from uh, this heater, from this heater out to this heater, and from this heater to ground. If you want to add the carburetor in there, you, you add it. 
I believe on the other switch, there, there's actually a, a three prong switch and a two prong. This just happens to be a two prong switch. So this is just simply on and off. Usually the carburetor is controlled by a thermostat. But I don't have that. So I'm just going to include this with the saw and let it go like that. So we're just at this point just heating the handles. So this wire is then plug and play and the rest of the installation here is completely identical to uh, the rest of 372's so it's no different and you've seen my other videos so um, this as is should suffice on getting heated handles uh, covered. Sorry this video is a little wonky but I, I hope that this shows how to do this. I didn't know how to do it. I had to look up diagrams, and the diagrams are not easily, um, not easily found. So this one is very simple. Again, from the generator to the switch, from the switch to the rear handle heat, from the rear handle heat to the front handle heat, from the front handle heat to ground. That's how it goes. Uh, just keep it nice and simple. If you have any questions, post in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.